lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you're new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon so a massive shout out to Abraham Mohammed, Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Billy Highvolt, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Chow Young Cat, Dank, David Rakia Gafford, David Wayne Foster, Edwin Johnson, Erwin Jennisons, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin, Henrik86, Jeronism, Joshua Balsimo, Kirsten Smith, Liam Nedrick, Life Is Short, Matt, Nagara, Nibai, Guitar Craig, Ryan Hart, Rene, Sally Ballis, Silver Umbrella, Skeptic936, Texas Mike, The Flat Earth, Sun, Moon and Zodiac Clock App, The Flat Earth Channel.com, Tina Baker and Tom Hawkins. So a massive shout out to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now we are joined by a fair few people in G Plus already, so I'm going to raise the mic on them and you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for the first live show. to say things are fact when they are just theory. Like an astronomer is going to know that. As soon as it's brought up to him, he's going to have to acknowledge that. Well, yeah, that's true. You know? Yeah, well said. Just like uh, Wakey Wakey, when he showed those pictures to that astrophysicist, and she says, yeah, I don't like those phony pictures. They missed yes. me. <laughs> well, yeah. she got it, right? Yeah. Now, let me, hello, let me hello. tell you. But let me tell you a common denominator that we've all seen, but I'll, I'll highlight right now. We've, we know what Zanuck argues about, right? He comes on the show a lot of times, and it's just a repeat, uh, you know, broken record. And same thing goes for Rumpus and everybody else, right? How come they never bring those pictures and videos from NASA that show the harnesses and wires and the satellites with the wire on top as spinning out of the so-called uh, space shuttle? They have excuses the for those. The wire is an antenna. You know how you know what they do. <laughs> no, no, but they do not come on and want to discuss that and explain those things. They want to explain in double speak reference frames and refraction and diffraction. We say, well, okay, fine, fine, fine. Well, what's this? Well, you're seeing what I'm seeing. He's reaching across, grabbing the astronaut by the hip by the wire harness. They're supposed to be in space where there's grab less gravity or no gravity and he should he should just be floating in that capsule but he's not you can see the wires what say you about this they yeah. never go there they never yeah. go well, there it's it's kind of in your face uh, i went over that frame by frame the guy who did the somersault and his buddy came over and tugged the wire yeah and frame by frame and charles flat earth math was like no 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 you can see he grabbed the he grabbed his pocket he didn't grab a wire he grabbed his pocket he went over frame by frame. He did not grab his pocket, and it was like his pinky that grabbed the wire. Very mm -hmm. gentle. Um, he, was, he was arguing that, no, he grabbed his pocket. It wasn't a wire. No. You go over it, you see. There's too many, but that's my whole point. My point is they see all this, and to answer righteous, it's not cognitive dissonance anymore. It's just outright lying. Yeah. Yep. Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> He's defending yeah. the cheating. Yeah. He's defending the cheating wife, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It, it, maybe that just brings shame upon themselves. They they don't want to admit they were duped and fooled. There's a lot of that in there. Ego, pride. I've gotten into arguments with dear dear family members on lesser subjects where I stood for something that was opposite of what they were saying and the evidence was obvious and i said look it's right here look at this picture look at this video look at, and have nothing to do flatter the other subject man talk about defending they just don't want to give it up i mean they want to believe a lie they're going to believe the lie yeah 
That, they can only do that so long, though. It's going to eat away at them. Good morning, oh, yeah. peoples. Hello. 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 Sup, chocolate. <laughs> you, you. What's good, people? Oh, what's good is we had one wonderful eagle at the Flat Earth Pigeon Conference. Hey, chocolate. Morning, chocolate. Yo, damn, what's good, righteous? Like feeling there. I hear George is like a traveling uh, flat Earth meetup troll. He goes to several. Interesting. Yeah, like All these I heard guys that think one. this this topic is so stupid, but yet can't stay away, can they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just about the money for them, guys. Well, the way I look at it is uh, I wouldn't mind meeting some of these ballers at these conventions. Maybe they would think the same. They wouldn't mind seeing some of us because we're always talking to each other. There's more to it than that. Possibly. Well, how, how many here on this panel right now on this show? Go out of their way, spend money to even do it, and go to things you don't believe in. Unless there was a purpose behind it of a future book, getting you more famous because they're going to show you there on their channels, and that helps your channel grow because all the Globers see how brave you are. I mean, that's just all about money and personifying who they are. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to join the community debate then go to nathanoakley.com and check out the Flat Earth Debate Forum which you should definitely all join. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion right here, right now, simply mute the page you are currently watching. Then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now, we are joined by The One, Sleeping Warrior, Righteous Force, Paul Hall, Jibby Jedi, Chocolate Saiyan, and Tenth Man in G+. Very good to have you, one and all. Good Great to be here, Nathan. Hello, hello, hello. And we also have a whole bunch of people in Discord. Very good to have you in the Discord server. Good to be here. Don't all shout at once in Discord. Yeah, someone said hello. Very good to have you. Thanks for being here. Any signs of Earth curvature? Not from San Francisco. Not from Bulgaria. From Tenerife. No, no, no. Any signs of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Well, yes. I think Danny Faulkner saw axial rotation under Tony's bus today. That's <laughs> axis, the rotation of a... An axle, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> that's very different. Well, that's why he got shafted. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just for those of you who don't know, prior to the conference, we were, or I was at least, I'll only speak for myself, slightly outraged that there's this uh, astronomer, PhD, at the Flat Earth Convention, or conference, F-E-I-C, -E and we asked Nathan Thompson... Sleeping Warrior more than I, if he would be so kind as to go up to this astronomer and ask him 
very specifically, how can you have gas pressure without a container? And Nathan Thompson, big shout out to you, my friend, obliged and went up to him and asked him that. And what he got as an answer was a dumbfounded silence. Now I'm going to give a shout out to Arwen at this point, who completely called it. So check out Flat Earth 1021, where Arwen says correctly so, that he would not have an answer. And that's precisely what happened. So big shout out to Arwen, who got it spot on. <laughs> well, maybe since he's under the bus observing axial rotation and got shafted, his comeback was lost due to transmission. It's getting worse. <laughs> talking, of, talking of gas pressure, any any evidence you can have gas pressure without a container? Shout out to Danny Faulkner. <laughs> Shout out, retracted. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you know, I was listening back to the um, premiere show last night, Nathan, and I've got to say that I was being proper bullied for the whole show. Bullied my ass. You completely misrepresented right, right my argument. So. So at, some, <laughs> at one stage you said, I don't think we should give him the mic and put him on stage. Like, talk about totally misrepresenting our argument. At no point did anybody suggest that we stick him on stage and give him a bloody time slot. But that's how you were representing our argument in your defence. It's like, wow, way to misrepresent us. I think, to be honest, I think there might have been a little bit of a... Then, then it was a little weird, Riley, because you were like, what do you, wanna, what do you guys want to do? Put him on stage and have a debate with him? Like, what do we do every day? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is what we do. I'm, I was just trying to protect the interests of the people that were going there that maybe wanted to just spend time networking and stuff with the people that were there rather than seeing this newbie on the block that's writing a book and all that. So I was just being a little bit more conservative. But after the show, obviously, in the in the after show, uh, me, Chocolate, Nathan, I am John, Arwin, we were all having a conversation and John persuaded me with a bit of brute force that I need to change my position. And I was like, do you know what? Fuck it. Let's just do it. So I did change my position, and, well, we all know he, he's not going to answer the question because he can't, because we all know you can't have gas pressure without a container. It's required. Even Perfect. Billy Blue Balls, he knows you need a container, but he still won't change his video. <laughs> Perfect. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? Yeah, no. Anybody? No, on the one? Nope. No, this one's not a, not a flavour of the month, distance to the sun. Fair enough. Any evidence of the R value, Earth radius? Presupposed. No natural phenomena to presuppose it. What about a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of said presupposed spherical Earth? Well, that's purely impossible. A little bit of nope. seismology. Any evidence of any viable hypothesis in the entire history of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? Nope, definitely not. Shout out to no. Danny Faulkner. <laughs> Another shout out to Danny Faulkner. Any scientific shout evidence of gravity? Good. Gravity? Scientific evidence thereof? Anybody? Nah. What is gravity? Bending of a conceptual medium to give rise to a not actual force. No, you cannot bend a concept. No, you can't bend a concept. That's correct. But that's what they call it in their current pseudoscience rhetoric of Einsteinian gravity. Well, then there is no evidence for that because it can't happen. That's On that note, uh, Riley, did you mention at some point that this guy was describing gravity and didn't mention Einstein at all? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. In, um, I got a copy of his book. Because I wanted to read it, because he's a new kid on the block. I've not come across him until very like in the last fortnight. I've never never heard of him before, and I wanted to read what he wrote. And obviously, there's a couple of topics that I'm most interested in. A lot of the topics I'm not really that interested in. You know, it's I can take it or leave it. I'll listen to somebody else arguing over it. But one of, obviously, my one of my interesting topics is gravity, and I got his book. So I read his his his, his chapter on gravity, and he doesn't mention Einstein. Not that I'm saying that Einstein's right, but he is your current science for gravity, right? It's not a force, it's the bending of a conceptual medium. But he's, he doesn't even mention it. So how can a PhD refuting flat Earth with current science not cite Einstein for gravity? It's like, hello? But that's not what he did. I highlighted this the moment you started on that section. Excellent book review, by the way, Anthony. I was totally hooked. I stayed with you for the whole stream. It was great. Anyway, um, the entire premise was a burden of proof reversal fallacy. So he immediately went from 
gravity to what flat earthers say gravity is as opposed to defining it in any way shape or form he just immediately flipped the burden of proof onto us and what we say is it's like we don't make claims about gravity that's you you moron that's your rhetoric why are you talking about what flat earthers say is who cares well, how can he write a book refuting flat Earth when he doesn't mention Einstein? Surely he's got to get a, even if it's just an honorary mention as being like a cool dude, you've got to mention him in Gravity somewhere, haven't you? No, sure, you haven't. You can't. All of his rhetoric requires a force to do things, and he doesn't have one in Einsteinian gravity, so they just revert to the previous gravity that was a force. So that's why he does it because he needs a force, and gravity isn't one. Well, it is if he describes it as Cavendish Reverend Michelle gravity also known incorrectly as newtonian but that's not the current bullshit as you correctly pointed out well maybe he's still stuck in 2015 2016 arguments where balls were still saying gravity is a force i mean obviously they're still saying it now but yeah but they say it now uh, very they say it very nervously now though have you have you know exactly exactly my point but this guy obviously feels like he wasn't challenged on the point and is kind of just brushing it under the, under the rug. Like, maybe the Flat Earthers won't know that Einstein's bending of space-time replaced or superseded <laughs> mass attracting mass. Because is that what he says it is in, the, in, the, in his book? Mass uh, attracting yeah, mass? Yeah, he's, he's referencing all the, all the Newtonian principles, the classical mechanics one. And I'm like, ah. really? Why, why would you do this? Well... Maybe he's not up to date with the flatter of debate. Nathan, you're <laughs> suggesting that he absolutely knows that Einstein's the current math and he misrepresents it on purpose. No, it needs most of the devil drives, right? He needs a force, so he's going to find a force in Newtonian, incorrectly labelled, gravity. So that's what he applies. Yeah, because how do you argue bending of space time? How do you even <clears throat> argue that? Somebody, so I hope somebody goes to him and says, "Why did you not reference Einstein at all in your book?" And see what he says. You just get that blank, stonewall face expression that Nathan got, where he's got nothing to say. Yeah, he's a hundred years out of date. That's unfortunate for him. Not a problem for us. We'll just point it out. You're not parroting the right pseudoscience, Doctor. <clears throat> oh, Arwen, was that you saying then? Yeah. So Pascal's law, I heard you talking about that and arguing with a couple of them uh, idiots. And you're right, Pascal's law is describing what the pressure does, and it doesn't make any reference to the gradient whatsoever. However, the, the gradient itself is caused by mass, and we know that because the mass is stacking on top of mass. And I know there's no intermolecular bonds, but there's still gases, like the gas pools, doesn't it? I know it's subject to the effects of entropy, and we need the sealed container if it's in a vacuum. But when you've got the, uh, the unsealed container in the environment that we're in, the effects of entropy are a lot slower because we're similar to the density and the, and, the, and the environment that the gas is pooling in in the first place. So it's a lot slower. But put it in a vacuum and watch it go poof. Pascal's law says it points in all available directions evenly away from the walls of the container. Well, the Earth would be the container in that context. Or everything's going off into space. They just don't like it. Are we going to stick yourself on mute? No. Okay, well, we'll listen to you typing instead then. It's all right. I don't, I don't hear a lot of glow proofs coming through the wire, so. <laughs> no, I know that. Type, typing it is. That old <clears throat> breath. So, anybody got any comments about me going over the top? Over no? the top? What do you mean? I didn't see oh, you. Oh, you do didn't a... see it, did you? I didn't see you do a stream. I was refreshing the page, and I refreshed it as many times as I could before I set this show up, and I didn't see you. I'd normally be watching while I set up, and I just yeah. didn't see your stream. Byron, I, I got really it. pissed off. What are you pissed off I about? Scored, I really liked it. Against the freaking oh. trolls. There's yeah, ballers yeah. doubling down on lies constantly, and they wouldn't stop. They just wouldn't stop, and they couldn't take it anymore. They're just liars, though, Arwen. They can't. They can't have no gravity. They need to have gravity. 
never even got to that point. Just this guy that brought on that Pascal's Law nonsense. He just would not admit that there is no addressing of gradient within the body of fluid pressure. <coughs> it's just not addressed, and they just refused, refused to go with it. It, it just wouldn't accept. It's, it doesn't matter where they look. They just never accept the truth. Wherever they look, they're always lying. Always. Deny, deny, I'm deny. I'm so deny. sick of it. I can't stand it anymore. Yeah, it's deny, deny, deny. They have to do it, though. It's like Billy Blue Balls. He wouldn't admit that he's got his, his label of his video. It's totally wrong. He won't admit it. Why? They just deny. They expand their lies. Yeah. They make more lies of based on denial. More and more and more. It's not just keeping one lie. No, they actually expand upon their lies. Yeah. And I'm sick of it. I can't believe they're allowing themselves to do that. Ah, uh, there you go. There you go. Allowing themselves. This is not your problem, Arwin. So what they're doing is they're projecting this onto you and your frustration saves them <laughs> their frustration. This is their problem, not yours. You don't need to concern yourselves with these fundies doubling down, rinsing and repeating, expanding out their bullshit, never accepting a rebuttal. That's not your problem. You know, sleep easy, mate. They don't. I don't know. I'm not <laughs> sleeping that easy over it. It's just... You should be sleeping easy because it's not you that's pushing the overt lie. It's them. I just like reminding them that they haven't got a force. It just kills them. They hate it. Have you guys seen the new NASA spacesuits for like the female or something? It's like with the swivel hips. Yeah. You guys want to share it? Yeah, you yeah, can't sure. turn your head, but you can swivel your hips. Yeah, let's have a look. We got a picture. It looks pretty bizarre. Yeah. Sure, screen. So these are the new Narnia suits. These suits yeah. are going to be claiming to go to the not actual region known as space. Okay, let's start from the top. Let me know where it is. Okay, let's have a look. Oh yes, I did see this. Yeah, and then... doesn't she look happy? <laughs> I wonder why they don't want to swivel at the hips for women. Like, I can't, I can't wait for the for the test in the vacuum chamber that they, I'm sure they'll do this time, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. just sure. to test the seal. If just, nothing just else, test. We're, we're, I'm just, I'm just waiting for one test where an astronaut is walking around. They got this giant vacuum chamber, right? One test where one of these guys is walking around in that vacuum chamber in that suit. No, it makes more sense to test the suit in the opposite environment in a big pool. That makes sense. Oh, man. No, not test. Film. Film, Jibby. <laughs> Films, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that every one of those suits has a flux capacitor. <laughs> yeah. Very good. So, yeah, that's never going anywhere. No. <clears throat> so where uh, do uh, ballers still think that gravity is a force? That seems to be the common theme still, even though everybody knows it's not one. They still seem to be pushing that, do they? Just going to put on screen what Chocolate Saints just sent. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> There's a comparison for you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, let, let's not forget that if we did something that required a force and we didn't have a force and we couldn't prove it, right? They'd never let us have it. Shout out to Cleary for the super chats. He says, oh, God, let's bring it up on the other screen <laughs> rather than trying to read it on this small screen. Hold on one sec. There's Globetard oh. Demis Suits. Did I read that right? Yeah. Globetard Demis Suits. That's right. What the hell does that mean? Thank you for the super chat, though. <laughs> it's a Latinification of a Globetard. Oh, I see. I see. He's, he's making, it, making it sound Latin. Gotcha. 
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, by the way, right underneath that comment is Warren Evans. It's the very person I was talking about. He's back. <clears throat> he's the one that did it. Did, did what? Sent you nuts? Yeah, he's the one that that refused to correct himself when I literally proved in detail with the very source page through Wikipedia of the effect that again Pascal's law that it did not address any gradient and he just couldn't do it. Yeah, it doesn't need to address the gradient. Him. It's talking about how the gas pressure behaves, not the constitution of the gas. Right. It addressed the the change of the entire container. Doesn't address any gradients within the container. Doesn't address pressure differentials within the closed liquid system. Just doesn't address it. <clears throat> but he can't. He can't help but but claim that it somehow disproves the gradient. He can't do it. He he can't let it go. It's like Billy Blue Balls. He just won't admit that he's got his video completely and utterly well wrong. Not just wrong, but he knows it's wrong as well, and he still won't change it. You have to wonder, like, I mean, it's one thing to get the wrong faux court with the with this guy in, in Paris and, you know, same name, same city, roughly the same time of the year, same time of chronology. Um, and one of them's a philosopher. The other one's a, um, a heliocentric physicist. I mean, what's the difference between a philosopher and a heliocentric physicist at that time, right? They're both essentially the same thing. So at least I made an innocent mistake and I realized, and when I got put, well, someone pointed it out to me and when I realized I fixed it straight away, but I deserve all the, all the ammunition fired my way because I made an error. But he stands, he doubles down and stands his ground. And it's like, dude, how can you do this with any integrity whatsoever? And obviously you can't. And then when you read his comments underneath his video and how some people are praising him for be for walking the walk. And I'm like, what do you mean walking the walk? The guy's completely he's wrong about his position. You can see that the, the comforting lie does suit a lot of people very comfortably. It's it's really bad. Where'd you <clears throat> where'd you get the gradient in the first place? Yeah. They want to argue over the constitution of the gradients. Well, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about how you have the gradient in the first place. But where'd you get the gradient in the first place? Have a look oh, at Billy it? Blue Ill Billy Blue Ball's video. He demonstrates a pressure a gas pressure gradient in a container. Admirably for us. It's fantastic actually from that from that perspective. Yeah, well, that works for us, so just role-play with me. Where'd you get the gradient in the first place? Gravity. Uh, no, gravity's not force. It's not going to give you gradiated gas. Well, Tenth Man said, work with, um, he said, work with me. Where so did I you get the gradient? Where'd you get the gradient of the gas in the first place? What, got, what do you have to have first before you get that? The container. Gas pressure. Gas pressure. And gas. Yeah, so please demonstrate your your side of the argument right now. Demonstrate that to me next to a vacuum. Yeah, they can't. They just do, they, they demand so that. Why it are you, so then why are you going to Pascal? You're arguing within the what? The fallacy again. Oh, I know, yeah. I, I know that. I well, just like reminded them that. I, I know that. I just like reminded them that even their own science doesn't support their assertions on this one. No, but if we learn anything on the show, it's that once you identify a fallacy, kill it on the spot. Sure. Okay, yeah, so, but so, so sleeping so, warrior likes to to bait them. This is well, this is what he does. He he baits them in. For the killer whale gets the seal, and he, he flips it around the water a few times, and then he gets bored. That's all I'm doing, really. This was more for Arwen's guy, who was kept coming within. Uh, wouldn't correctly identify Pascal's actual uh, findings. So he's going to hijack it to make it seem like it proves his point. So then why even go there? Because you convolute it. So just say, where do you get the gradient? Gas pressure. Okay. So please show me here gas pressure with a gradient next to a vacuum. Please show that to me. Yeah. If you're going to phrase it like that, you've got to add a little caveat. Beyond your fundamentalist religious belief in a sky vacuum, because typically, like son of an astronaut M. Scott Veach, they'll just point at the sky. Circular reasoning then sets in immediately, and they think they've won the argument when they assert their circular reasoning. Well, the atmosphere would be an example of that. No. <laughs> so that's why the question is phrased more accurately. How can you have gas pressure without a container, as opposed to how can you have gas pressure next to a vacuum? 
Right. No, you're right. And, but I was already in, how could I say it, in my mind, in the debate with the guy, and I've already told him you can't have it without a container. So please sure. do it the way you say it. Uh, and I appreciate it very much so. But on the other hand, you know, maybe it's directed at chocolate. You can't have Tenth Man pointing out to Sleeping Warrior that you should cut the air entire argument off at the legs rather than debate within the fallacy unless Anthony started to do that so there's a kind of there's a kind of symbiosis if that's the correct word required between people actually asserting incorrect arguments and just pointing out why they're incorrect well if someone just off the top of my head if someone just uh, wants to say well what about Pascal they go well what, you know what about him state your case okay great demonstrate it <laughs> You're not going to demonstrate it. <clears throat> sure, exactly. Can't have gas pressure without a container. It's in the definition. And even when you show them the definition, they still deny it. Yeah. People deny entropy. You know, they're arguing about whether or not an open container is a container. That makes them fundamentally stupid. But ultimately yeah. speaking... While they're saying, well, there you go, that, that defies what you've asked for. Well, no, we, the question hasn't changed in 18 months. How can you have gas pressure without a container? Showing us an open pipe that's very, very tall with a massive surface area and a tiny hole at the top relative to the size and surface area isn't showing gas pressure without a container. It's showing you a leaky container. Now, the further assertion is that, well, there you go, we've got earth as an open gas pipe with massive surface area for the <laughs> for the gas press no that's not analogous to your marble in a vacuum either because you haven't got any walls you know gas expands in all directions now in a pipe it can expand in all directions occasionally some of the gas will go out of the hole now that effect is called entropy now given enough time this is where the argument becomes ludicrous oh no no we've defied entropy with a pipe no you haven't Given enough time, not only will the gas fill the available volume, i.e. it will all leave the pipe, the pipe itself would succumb to nature. It will also suffer the effects of entropy given enough time. The pipe itself wouldn't be there. <laughs> you know, it's going to succumb to entropy like everything. It's a natural law. But here we are arguing in a short period of time, given that entropy is proportional to time, how it doesn't fill the space. Well, yeah, yeah, it will eventually, though. That's entropy. You're not going to defy it. It's a natural law. Not only will the gas fill the space from the open container pipe into the available volume, i.e. the atmosphere, it will also degrade the pipe, given enough time. And the house behind it. Yeah, for God's sake. People don't understand entropy. <clears throat> I think they do. I think they have to obfuscate it like they do on all topics so that the audience is left confused. Yeah, well, the heliocentric, it... the heliocentric uh, position is not scientific. It, they're science deniers, like you said on that one video that, uh, uh, that went out with the music background. Natural law backs flat earth, not heliocentrism. Yeah, of course. Let me just boil it down for the morons. Right, yeah, the ones that are arguing that no, the gas isn't going to fill the available volume. It's going to what indefinitely stay in the pipe because he filmed it three hours later. Yeah, time, entropy, the two things are directly connected. So, what happens if you come back a hundred years later? I'll tell you something for nothing. That pipe won't be there. The house won't be there. It'll all be in bloody rubble because that's entropy. Given a thousand years, the whole thing will be dust. Yeah, the, what, what you think the pipe will still have the gas in it? Morons. Utter morons. Just remember, they've always got to deny. You see that all the time. The rumpus will never, ever, ever admit. Actually, sometimes the rumpus has admitted a couple of times that he might not be right on summit. Maybe rumpus is a bad example on this one occasion. But ballers fundamentally will never, ever concede points. Billy Blue Balls is one of them. He's proof. Did we all enjoy the coverage of uh, FEIC over the weekend? Oh, yeah. I, I didn't see much of it, to be honest. I saw all of it, what was available on YouTube. Uh, what? FEIC? I saw all of it, which was available on YouTube. The only part I saw was uh, 
Danny Faulkner not answering Nathan. <laughs> yeah. I've never come across anything I couldn't refute. Oh, hi, Nathan. How do you have gas pressure without a container? Silence. Well, now you just have me. Silence of the lamb. I, I, I told you guys he'd be the one to do it. <laughs> I saw yeah, it now. Yeah, good call. Good call. I mean, you were here while we were talking him into it, right, Chocolate? I mean, that didn't end yeah. up being very useful. I, I was the one during the episode that I was like, if anybody will do it, Nathan Thompson is the guy to get. Yeah, but I mean, after get. after that recording ended, so <laughs> yeah, we were yeah, all chatting about it for yeah. a further hour, and then Anthony said, just start recording, we'll get him on the line. And although I recorded it, it ended up being, you know, better summarised with Anthony putting a couple of speech bubbles with him and Nathan Thompson on the backdrop of the video that's just been mirrored by... Mark Sargent. So that was a, a better way than just publishing us saying to Nathan Thompson, you know, go and ask him how you can have gas pressure without a container. Um, but that was ultimately the narrative that got put through on those speech bubbles. And it took, what, 30 seconds to summarise that, what, 20 minute recording. There was no point in publishing it. But what it showed was that, you know, as I say, could call chocolate, you know, getting Nathan Thompson on the case. Because he is, he's more of an activist. I know on your broadcast, you said you'd ask Jaron, um, Sleeping Warrior. And, you know, yeah. maybe that's not his bag. He's not that confrontational. When he got into a debate because he had to with Red Rhetoric based on a bargain that he'd made with him over the ISS from memory, this is going back a time, you know, even in debate, he wasn't overly confrontational. That's just not his shtick, which is perfectly reasonable. Nathan Thompson, on the other hand, that is definitely his shtick. He was like, on it, like, flies on shit. Kudos, Nathan Thompson. You know, I, yeah, I don't was, want that to sound like I'm... He was raw, wasn't he? Yeah, but like I say... Use any lube. I don't want that to sound in any way detrimental to Jaron because, as I say, if that's not your bag, that's not your bag. Um, but, you know, getting Nathan Thompson on the, on the case, I was extremely chuffed to see that as the result. Because, you know, only hours after that was published by you and then Mark Sargent, uh, our discussion about it came out a couple of hours later where we're all saying, you know, why aren't you all outraged and going up to him? And it's like, oh, well, you know, all's well that ends well. Nathan's actually achieved that prior to the conference ending. And it's like, yeah, that's a nice... You know, that's the, that's the cherry on top, right? Because all the other things, although we were kind of condemning them in this regard, when we were saying, no, no, yeah, holding each other's dicks isn't what it's about when there's a guy that's directly in opposition to what you're standing for at the conference. We, you know, I did later on go on to say, no, all those things are still very positive. But, you know, it's it sours the experience if he hadn't been approached. But instead, because he was, it's just the cherry on top of what was obviously a very nice event that went off really well. So, you know, it's brilliant. It's one of those things that if it didn't happen, you'd be annoyed because it has your all smiles. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I saw that. I saw David post that even before Sleeping Warrior made the video, which was great because, like, like you said, like it worked out beautifully with the, the bubbles and stuff. And then he had the, the actual event happening on video to play right afterwards. And that was great. The timing was awesome. I'm glad it happened. We should we should do the eight housekeeping questions in the bubble speech and with uh, Danny Faulkner sitting there not saying anything and <laughs> rename a new book rename a new book the eight questions I couldn't answer <laughs> yeah the eight answer, the eight questions I couldn't refute that was the way you <laughs> it's just not saying anything so this is a better title I couldn't answer these eight. <laughs> Or you can put a title on it uh, as uh, Danny Faulkner summarizes all the science about the heliocentric model in one sentence, and they're just like silence. Yeah. I hope he realizes who we are now. And that I'd love to have him. Can you imagine him coming into one of these hangouts? And we just say to him, okay, Danny, so you're obviously not a troll. You're not a, you're not a pure denier, but you do claim to be a, a man of science. What science is there? And just start working our way through the questions. Calm gently and then seeing what happens and i you know i can't see him really getting past half of the questions without anything other than mumbo jumbo he, he would he's, never come on here he's never coming that, that on a show happen. like this <laughs> he's he was frightened to death by nathan thompson <laughs> yeah he looked like um an, a, a, like a what's the word an old a, a weak old man george he looked a little bit like george nothing you didn't he, he looked scared Listen, by the time Nathan Thompson got to Danny Faulkner, Nathan Thompson already had his phone thrown by George, someone <laughs> tipping his cap ready for a fight, and then here comes Danny Faulkner saying, is this that same guy? <laughs> yeah, and that, he, he basically upstaged everyone, didn't he, Nathan Thompson? <laughs> He's like out there. 
causing a bit of not causing a bit of a ruckus, just getting involved in ruckuses. Yeah, yeah. It was funny because I showed him a copy of it before I went public with it, and when I w- played it back, I didn't quite get the timings right. It was a bit too fast, so I had to go back and redo it again. But he said, when he watched it, he just said to me, literally, he read me back, and he said, uh, he'd just put "lol, hold my beer," <laughs> and it was just that one line that's just like, yeah, you know, Nathan's gonna go get, get jump all over this. <laughs> Any other notable things from the conference other than hats being tipped, people getting kicked out for trolling? Anything else anyone can note? Yeah, um, I don't know. We don't need to talk about any of the, any of the like troll incidents, do we? Let's talk about all the good things that happened. Because there was loads. Of, I mean, if you haven't been to one of the conferences, I mean, they're worth going just to see people that networking. I know people say, "Oh, it's come by art," but. To be honest, there's nothing wrong with Combayar in a conference setup because that's kind of one of the the, the attractive points. Because let's not forget the ballers can't have a conference. You're never going to see a baller conference of the Ball Earth conference, right? It's never going to happen. You might see them all in a pub having a couple of drinks in like a very niche area, but you're never going to see a Ball Earth conference. So I'd embrace it if I was you while it's there because if they don't, if they run out of gas, we'll miss them when they're gone. Shout out to Issa Mahalski. It says, quote, Heliocentrum, start that again. Quote, heliocentrism cannot be disproven, but we reject the horror of a non-fixed position on philosophical grounds. Smiley face, end quote. That's okay, then. <laughs> He's talking about the CMB, isn't he? Pardon? He's talking about the CMB. You know, the conclusion you would draw is that you're of central position, but they reject it. Because it's not... It's not conducive, yeah, right? That sounds like a <laughs> paraphrase from Hubble. Yeah. Said that. Yeah. Well, just stick around this show. You'll see heliocentrism centers and be disproven on a daily basis. The shout out to Isa Holski. Thank you very much for the super chat, Isa. Mm, shout out retracted. <laughs> shout How out, dare Isa. you? They can't sh- retracted. <laughs> shout, shout out for Isa. Shout out reinstated. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> Just for those of you who don't know, Issa Mahalski is the guy, much more handsome than myself, that flashes up on the pictures wearing a hoodie, from flat earth debate hoodie. That's Issa Mahalski, just in case anyone was wondering who Issa Mahalski is. That's him. But Tony, imagine if they had a Bollard conference, how many flat earthers would you get there? Tons. What would you call it? <laughs> I don't know. That's a TED talk. <laughs> nah, that's too specific. I was thinking that while you were talking, I, was, I thought, should I interrupt and mention something about, you know, various different astronomy conventions and things like that? But they're uber specific to a given topic, as opposed to people fresh f- uh, pressing the flesh because they are of an anti flat earth mindset. So that's what we mean when we say ballers. We actually, the, the specific category would be anti flat earthers, right? That's who we're talking about. Not average Joe who just goes, oh, I think I might go and watch Neil deGrasse Tyson or Stephen, whoever, Brian Cox, you know, it, it doesn't matter. They're not who we're talking about. The ballers are anti flat earthers. That's what they actually are. But what would you call a convention of them? Praising uh, <laughs> the space festival. Desperate. So if it, if it is is it a group of geese is called a gaggle or whatever everything's got a name we need to give a, a name to a, a group of ballers that are in their own conference <laughs> that we should have a competition. I, th- I thought it was a harem. How about isn't it harem harem of fuckwits? Oh, I got got ruined. <laughs> a harem. Now, now you know my pain, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my joke totally spoiled. Yeah, I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> They're, they're never going to put on a conference. Hey, let's put on a conference to prove we live on the globe. <laughs> well, they can't, can they? That's why I'm saying we should embrace it whilst they're there. Because if they run out of steam for any reason, you, everyone that's not been to one, they'll regret not going because they are fun. Well, they do have the dances called the ball. So maybe they always have had one. Let's just ask them, when is the Ball Earth Conference happening? Yeah. Like they ask us, where's your model and all that. Let's say, well, when's your Ball Earth Conference, dickheads? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I like that. Well, in all <laughs> fairness, make- they don't really need a conference because everything is a celebration of the globe in the heliocentric model. 
Yeah. No, let's make them. Let's make them. Let's make them put on a conference by just teasing <laughs> them, and then they'll be showing NASA videos with harnesses. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you yeah. what I found interesting in that guy's book. He was referencing how, um, how Flat Earth has jumped all over one particular citation. I can't remember what it was from. Oh, it was to do with um, it was to do with observing curvature out of plain windows, right? He reckons you can see the curvature at 30,000 feet, right? Even though Neil deGrasse Tyson says you can't see it at 127,000 feet, that stuff is flat. And then his next paragraph was about Neil deGrasse Tyson, which I thought he was going to reference that stuff is flat. And he wasn't, he was referencing something else about Neil deGrasse Tyson. And I'm like, this guy doesn't really know much about the arguments here. He's, he's, he's not really mentioning the key things he needs to mention. And he's ignoring the stuff that's like, you know, it's just bizarre how he, it's interesting to see his perspective on it because his perspective differs greatly from ours. Not well, much. remember, he, he's coming from a PhD in astronomy perspective. Well, he's or, a New Earth or, creationist as well, so it's he's coming from a, a, a religious perspective, I believe, based on what it, people have been saying to me. Yeah, well, Nathan asked him about that too. He, actually, before the gas pressure, Nathan asked him about his perspective coming from the Christian view, and <laughs> again, he had no response. He just didn't want to say anything to the guy. Yeah, I think he argues that um, science proves creation, doesn't he? I don't know. I don't know yeah, what his arguments are. Angle. So oh, that's an oxymoron. We're here. Yeah, ipso facto. My goodness. I don't need anything to prove that I'm here. I'm here. Uh, prove guys, it. Give me, guys, give me 20 minutes and be ready to laugh a lot. You want me to prove it, Chocolate? Nathan will get mad. I'll have about 30 puns in a row. <laughs> 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 I am mad about that, bro. I know, I know. Oh, it's nonsense. This guy's all about fame, money, and being at the top of his field. And, uh, oh, by the way, I'm a Christian. Oh, really? Then why don't you believe the Bible cosmology? <laughs> what kind of Christian are you? So he, so he doesn't accept the Christian perspective. He can't. In the Christian cosmology, God made the sun, the moon, and the stars after he made the earth. And he put it right. inside, and he put it inside something called the firmament, the rakia. Ah, so that makes it more that makes more sense for why he sat there with a blank expression on his face when Nathan was asking his questions. Because oh, I mean, you can yeah. interpret it, you can interpret it that he couldn't answer, or you can interpret it that he chose not to because reasons. Now, if he's a, yeah, I've never really thought about it from his New Earth perspective as a a, a religion based scientist or whatever, because it's kind of it is a kind of contradiction in terms, isn't it? Well, that's Not why kind of. Was it is a him, contradiction. Do you know what it says in the Bible about those perpetuating lies and shit like that? Because of the yeah, Christian was... view. Yeah, that was Nathan's view, wasn't it? Clearly, the Bible is a geocentric book. Clearly, 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 clearly. You can't get around it. So what they do, Anthony, is they say, oh, it's figurative, it's poetic, it means this. Except Genesis is not the Psalms, and it's not Proverbs. It's written, I mean, in fact, this is how the six-day creation was. So they can't get around it. It's just double speak. I did uh, 12 years of Jesuit Catholic school, and they taught both, Big Bang, creation, but they always leaned on Big Bang being the more true, as, like you were saying, the creation story of the Bible was more, like, poetic, and, well, this is what the, the you know, the, the people back then may have it's it, it, they made it more poetic but they leaned heavy on science mm -hmm. well because lemaitre lemaitre did you hear about lemaitre while you were there who george lemaitre i no i'm not ringing a bell there. george lemaitre is the jesuit priest who discovered and made up big bang oh yeah 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 they didn't teach that in school though i learned that later <laughs> Right, but that's their, that came from the Catholics. Yeah, I, I tried. The only way I could resolve it was to combine the two and say God created the Big Bang. <laughs> well, that's, that's my right. view on it. If there was a Big Bang, that would be the moment of inception from like a divine intervention that would go, do you know what? I'm, I'm going to stick an earth and I'm going to stick it there. Boom, and it arrived. 
And then I could see that being a big bang because if I was the creator or a creator and I wanted to create something, I'd be doing it with an explosion. That makes sense to me. But to, to denounce that it's anything to do with creation seems the, the antithesis of everything to me. It's, if there was creation, a big bang would be the way it would be done. But you can't yeah. have a big bang without like a, somebody lighting a match. Hang on, where'd you get the match? Explosions are destructive. Exactly. Yeah, you had pre-match. <laughs> pre-substance before the pre-match that created the Big Bang out of nothing. You had hey, pre-substance. Cho <laughs> hey, chocolate. We got top, top people working on this. <laughs> but see, if you use the Bible, though, um, there was something there that God used. So if you just, from a biblical argument, there was something there. Not a philosophical argument nor scientific argument from a biblical argument. Does anybody know what that substance was? I do. Yeah, what water. Was there? In the in the beginning, water. what was there? What was the? There was nothing in the beginning, was there? No, oh. there was water. Oh yes, he separated the waters. Well, it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's the first line, isn't it? Yes, but the point is that he never talked about creating the water. It's as if it was already there and was created prior to him creating everything. So he t the water was there and there was a void and and he took it from that and just expanded the six days from there. Hold on, say that so, again. Hold on. What do you mean the water was always there because it wasn't talked about? Well, it never said he created the water. It was as if it was already created to begin with. No, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yes, that's a summary. Not just go... Go on with the uh, rest of the verse, and you'll see that now the water was formless, wasn't it? Isn't that the next line? Yeah. Well, go ahead. Just pull it up. Genesis one. This is real. Simple. I'm reading it. I've actually got a Bible in my hand right now. Okay, read it. Read it. So, like in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over waters. Okay, so. He created everything, and then he just jumps right into it where the water was there, and he starts doing it. Yeah, it's kind of like, it seems so obvious, like, uh, not, I, don't know, I, before, I don't know, it can be a big bang. So why, no, it's not the big bang, that's the whole point. So why, I know, I know. These, these, these people but who how, say that... How could the waters have been there before he created the earth? No, that's water? Not, no, he created the water too, Chocolate. It's just, it, it never goes into saying... It, I created the waters, and then it was formless and void. It just starts there. It's, it seems to right. me. That, so um, basically him saying he cre created the earth, that's, that would just be inclusive of land, water, correct. everything. Every, right. okay. Everything, that's, correct. That's but the way I not, take it, yeah. Yeah, of course, because he created everything. So the way I – are you guys familiar with the Eden Project? It's in, like, southeast of England, southwest of England. Uh, I'm in California, so I wouldn't know about that. Yeah, I, I'm familiar. It's basically a dome. It's like a big dome. Um, it's like a, a, I think they call it a bio world or a bio culture or a bio, bio dome. Bio dome or something, yeah. And um, the idea of it is it's supposed to be self sustaining. Um, no outside contact with the outside world or something like that. I, I mean, I'm paraphrasing. It's not exactly like that. But the point is, I imagine that when I read that opening paragraph in the Bible, I read that one paragraph and I imagine a big ocean and then now the earth was formless and God did this, that, and the other. It, it seems to me like he creates a dome on, at the bottom of the sea and the, the bottom of the sea becomes the land and then everything around it is the heaven, the waters of heaven. As, as if we're underwater. No, water. no, no keep, keep reading, Anthony, and they'll say he separated the waters from the waters by creating the firmament. Yeah, separated the waters from the waters. Like that to me is like, it's like we're at the bottom of the sea. No. He's saying that the water, he separated it and put a firmament, rakia dome, if you like, and then above the dome is some of the water, and inside the dome is the rest of the water, which we call our seas and oceans and lakes and everything else. No, but you, you missed the bit where I said, to me, and then you said, no. And I'm like, yeah, to me, that's how it seems. <laughs> it's my interpretation of what I'm reading. <laughs> it seems to be a dome under the sea. I, I don't know what you're I kind of Go ahead. No, go ahead, Finch. I said I think I agree with Anthony. So the way it reads, it's almost like there's, cause there's waters above and waters underneath, and there's a dome. So it sounds like it's in, if the, water, the things was created inside the inside the firmament. I inside agree. The water, inside the water. I agree. Inside the water. 
No, no, I, I agree. It's just their separation is the firmament. Whether it's a half circle or full circle, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and let's not forget, there's more evidence for Noah's Ark than there is for gravity. I mean, that's a killer sentence. Because at least they've got a boat, right? Whether it's the right boat or not, is it doesn't really matter. At least they've got a boat in the mountains of Ararat where they say it should be. And you can argue over whether it is or it isn't, but at least it's still more credible, tangible evidence than gravity's got. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, ballers. Hey, how about the evidence of a worldwide flood in every part of this world? Yeah. They deny sure, that. that and that doesn't work on a heliocentric model, the flood. But it works it's in the biblical cosmology with distorted people, waters below and above. My bad, Richard. Go ahead, yeah, I'm say people, I have a... people have problems with using the word firmament, but yet I have a CIA document in my phone right now that uses both the words firmament and flat earth. Yes, I mean, I've seen that. Yeah, it's just like these guys know, man. Hey, Anthony, that Eden project. Chocolate? Anthony, Say again? That, that Eden project you're talking about, Anthony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has a dome. Yeah. What does that tell you? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Symbology in it. It's, no, it's, it's a symbol because. No. No, no, no. They, you're saying it's self-sustaining, right? But they need a container. Oh, well, that's right, yeah. It's like the um, it's like all those mountains that are all in Antarctic regions. In, in, in Antarctica, for some reason, they name a lot of the mountains domes. And it's like, of all the names to use for a mountain, not, not a cliff, not a mountain, not a ravine or whatever. I mean, what mounts, hills, whatever words that you might use to describe a mountain. And they use the word dome. It's like... You gotta be kidding me, right? <laughs> Just seems to be taking the piss. Yeah, it's just when when the Catholic again, I was a former Catholic, so I say it with a little bit of experience. When they say they believe in the Bible, it's uh, not true. They don't believe in the Bible. They use the Bible, but they teach Catholicism. I'm not talking about the people. I'm talking about the higher echelon, the people in who are the deceivers. It's interesting how, uh, how the, cause, how the um, constitution of this topic kind of all points back to a biblical creation. And I'm not even religious. I, I was brought up Christian as a kid, so I understood how like Easter and all the stuff that they teach you in Sunday school. And Nathan's in, brought up the same way. But I've kind of stepped away from it as an adult, certainly in my earlier adult years. But everything's kind of leaning back to it now. It's like, yeah, it has to be created. Is it God? With a little G? Is it God with a big G? Or is it anything? Or I mean, Ultimately, it's definitely not evolution the way we're told. I'm happy that it's not evolution. Uh, answer they could being come from non-being? No. So then it's God with a big G. I know. I was just doing it like metaphorically, I, I guess. I know, I know. I'm just doing my part. I'm, uh, I'm not a, uh, an expert on this, but what, did they, what does it mean when they say, let us create man in our image? That's the plural. word... Yeah, that's the plural singular for God, Elohim. Uh, it's, it's singular, yet it's spoken in plural. So that's where the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image. What was the image of God prior to Jesus taking a body? Well, it's spirit. God is, Thanks, God, Paul. Is a, God is a spirit. The Holy Spirit's a spirit, and Jesus was a spirit until he took a form of a man. Now he's got a, a resurrected body, flesh and bone. Sorry to interrupt. So that's the Trinity. Sorry to interrupt. So, uh, well, Easter's on screen. That's not why I interrupted. So, I think Travis and Chris are both trying to get a word in and have been for a while. I don't know who wants to go first. All right. Travis or Chris? I was just, I was just asking if, if uh, chocolate was CIA material. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm not government, not a G man. But apparently, the government likes to release documents that talk about flat earth and firmaments and that people aren't sure of the shape of the earth. I mean, they're out there, man. NASA documents, CIA, uh, Army. They're all over if you're willing to look. Yeah, but well, what they do is they find, they find convenient excuses to be able to dismiss the, the merit of what the document states. So, for instance, that guy, um, oh, what's his name now? That astrologist, astronomist. Danny Faulkner. Oh, Danny Faulkner, yeah. 
he said about that NASA document that references the stationary unit and non-rotating plane. He references he references that as uh, simply a parameter that the document's working within, rather than a, a statement that we should take as literal. And I'm like, well, that's easy to say it like that, but yeah, that's, it, that's it, cute. Why why would it take that parameter? It doesn't need that to. That would be, be completely it. opposite of the parameter that we're supposed to live in, right? What would be the purpose of that? Yeah, saying, the document saying take this parameter as being the parameter you use flat. And then he's simultaneously saying, but they don't mean literally use it as a parameter. Yeah, yeah, they do. They quite literally specify that. Yeah. So if he's, if he's willing to misquote and even go against what the Bible says, and now with these documents, misquote and change what parameter means, what does that tell you about this person? He's either in it for money or he's just out to deceive people. Not out to deceive people, just deceive. Well, you can't it. blame him, right? That you, you can't blame him because I mean, a NASA document stating that the Earth is flat and non-rotational is pretty detrimental. That's NASA. They well, show you the complete episode. So I, <laughs> he's an apple. I can add a little bit. Um, so I talked to Doctor Faulkner. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Go on. So on Friday, after after I jumped on the debates for a little bit, um, I did see Dr. Faulkner at the conference. Now, I was talking with Travis, a.k.a. Uh, the Plain Truth, and we, we saw him walking by, and it was sort of, our, sort of just happenstance. So I asked Travis, I said, hey, have you seen Dr. Faulkner you know, here? And he said, actually, that's him right there. And as I turn around, he's walking past us, and I said, hey, let's grab him. I go, I want to ask him a couple questions. So he said, okay. So we, we called him over. I said, hey, Dr. Faulkner, can we speak to you for a minute? And he said, sure. And he was, you know, he came over and just asked him a couple questions. First question I really asked him was like, well, what are you doing here? You know, I said, what you know, are you, are you just interested or are you trying to, you know, learn more or what? And he said, yeah, basically learn more. Um, he's like, I'm always learning. He said, uh, he's been to all three of the, of the North America flat earth conferences. So that was interesting. So he said the first, you know, he got his, he just put his book out. So he'd been to the first two and what one was in Raleigh. And one was in Denver. And um, he said he just was coming to this one to see, you know, any, if there was any new or additional arguments or topics that he could, you know, get into a research. So that was kind of how it started. And on, uh, then pretty much I, I only got a couple questions. And my very next question was, are you interested in debating a flat earther? His answer was basically, and I'm paraphrasing, was no. No, not interested. Or no, not really. Something to, the, to that effect. And I told him after that, I said, that's one of the big criticisms that the ball side is getting and that you're going to get is that, you know, with these claims um, and a book and everything, I said, you really need to be, be prepared to, to debate someone. Um, so let's see what else. That, I mean, that was mostly it. Like I say, Travis was there and he kind of got a couple questions and Travis sort of turned it more biblical, kind of like you guys are talking about. Dr. Faulkner said his understanding of the word rakia was expanded. He does not accept that it means firmament or some type of piece of metal or, or whatever some of those other definitions are. Um, so take that for what it's worth. Cool. Well done. Well, Who's causing oh, all this? La oh, and Hold on. Somebody in the G Plus Hangouts had to close oh, the that, line. That was Paul. <laughs> I sent him a Skype message to mute, but he <laughs> finally did when Chris is done. I. Hardly heard what Chris said. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Sorry about that. Sorry, Paul. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Sorry. No, no, you don't need to apologize. <laughs> yeah. I, I, had to, I had to close down their line because somebody was rumpusing you. <laughs> it was Paul with his mouth oh, wide open. I didn't know. No worries. Just, I, yeah. I can summarize much shorter. In summary, he doesn't want to debate a flat earther, and he believes Rakia uh, means expanse and not any type of a, a firmament dome or, or metal. Um, there you go. Right, but when he says that, he doesn't have the Hebrew backing him at all. And it makes, no, con it makes no sense in the context of Werner von Braun's tombstone or gravestone if he takes it to mean expanse. Unless I suppose you could argue right. expanse so means he, he claimed to have spoken with a um, Hebraic um, expert and that that was the Hebraic expert's connotation of, of that word and, and scenario. Well, he's, he's, he's sorely mistaken because all you got to do is go into the actual root word 
and it doesn't say expanse. It says the opposite. It says hard substance. Molten glass is referred to. And David he uh, Heisner, who's an expert in this old, old uh, ancient languages, says, look, there's no getting around it. To the Hebrews, it was a dome. And with that, I'll say if you're watching this on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on the Nathan Oakley Li uh, 1980 live stream then this is where we bid you farewell a huge massive enormous thank you to all of today's debating panel on g plus and discord and of course a massive thank you to all of you in the nathan oakley 1980 live stream for smashing the super chat hopefully commenting sharing subscribing and all that good stuff be sure to check out nathanoakley.com and the flat earth debate forum to keep up to date with the community debate as i say stay tuned if you're watching our nathan oakley channel and i'll see you all in the next video Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Shout out to MC Universe Sacred Truth Seeker for hitting the super chat. So the, the other thing that Dr. Faulkner didn't want is when I, and I should have started with this, the very first thing I asked was I pulled out my, my phone and I said, do you mind if I videotape our conversation? And he said, well, why do you want to do that? And I said, well, for documentation purposes, I said, I have a channel, I'll put this out there and let everyone kind of, you know, make their own minds up and hear, hear your answers. And he said he did not want me to do that. So unfortunately, I, I did snap a picture on uh, standing next to him, um, but I did not, I was not allowed to do video and I didn't want, I wanted to respect his wishes. So I didn't want him to walk away. You know, I didn't want to start videoing and then him just walk away and not not even talk to us. So that's kind of what happened. Yeah, the, the way to, the only way to get around that is to not give him any option. I mean, he's in an arena where obviously people are going to ask him questions. He's been announced on the bill effectively in the intro. And if you happen to be live streaming and come across him and he said, no, I didn't, I prefer not to be filmed when you were already filming him, then obviously, yeah, you turn the camera away from him. But typically you'd, just, you'd be saying, it'd be blatantly obvious if you've got a great big gimbal like I have that you're filming because you can see yourself on the, the screen itself. I mean, I'd launch straight into the question. I wouldn't even ask if he, if he was happy with it. If he objected, obviously I'd stop. <laughs> but by the same token, I'd still be asking him the question. If I could... Uh, go back to what he said about Rakia. Can you repeat that summary of what he said, Rakia? So again, summarizing and from memory, I don't have it on video per his request. Um, he and, and Travis was there. So if Travis is comfortable coming on, he could he could probably give you the explanation. Because Travis asked the question. I didn't ask the question, but I was listening. His his response to what Rakia meant was that in his research and his his talks with what he called a Hebraic uh um, you know, expert or, or linguist or whatever, um, that this this Hebraic expert said that there's well, first of all, he did admit there's many meanings to the word, and he said in this in this particular instance and connotation, he believed uh, it to be expanse. Right. Okay. So I've actually debated and talked to people about that word expanse. Uh, the modern uh, version is expanse, but if you go to the he Hebrew word rakia and the root word raka. And I'm looking at it right here in front of me uh, to stamp, to beat out, one who beats out, to overlay, beat out, beaten out. How do you beat out a, an expanse? And then when it goes to uh, rock, Strong's definition of raka, the root word for rakia, primitive root, to pound the earth as a sign of passion by analogy to expand, hammering, an implication to overlay with thin sheets of metal, beat make broad spread abroad so basically god is saying the firmament is similar to beating out thin sheets of metal and having a hard surface that's the way the hebrews took it that's why they always thought it was a dome well, if i just so read i out, don't know so, sorry to interrupt so i'm just going to read out the last super chat just because i didn't during the show so mc universe sacred truth seeker says in ancient gnostic text it states that the demurrage and his archons don't create anything, just manipulate what is already created. Yeah, that's like the first law of thermodynamics. I don't know about archons, but <laughs> the last bit I agree with, just manipulate what was already created. Anyway, if he's watching this in the uh, Uncut and After Show, shout out to you again for the Super Chat MC Universe. I did actually shout you out just before I cut the live show.
Yeah, I mean, Tense, you're right. And, and it goes to the point you guys were speaking about earlier, which was he ha- they have to manipulate the text to say what they needed to say to, to believe in ball, ball spinning earth, right? I mean, if, if, it, if they can spin it to say it means expanse, okay, then that just means atmosphere, right? So which is it? Is, yeah, it, well, is it expanse and atmosphere or is it a hardened metallic dome or, or um, molten thing thingy-majig? I don't know. Well, this is this, they do the same thing with day. They say day is not a day. It's not? No, they change it around. They say, oh, when God was created, it's the Big Bang. It took time. The day doesn't mean a day. It means a period well, of time. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's wrong because the word it means day, <laughs> like 24-hour day. <laughs> that's what it so, means. I've heard people say that a day for God ref- references about a thousand years. Is yeah. there any truth in that? No, that's well, a no, similar. It's, it's, that's it's, similar. It's, uh, yep, I asked Zen Garcia. It's specified. I want to get those words out. When, when, it's, when it has a, a specific length, it's specified in the Bible. My grandma had me over a barrel on this many, many years ago. But it's specific. It'll tell you what the length is. Radio check. It actually says it. Uh, can I take Radio hey, John. check. Hey, John. Yeah, we go. Hey. Yeah. That thousand years is like a day. That's a simile. Yeah. It's a rhetorical device. So it's not physical or not literal. Exactly. And, and, and not on, and I'll, not I'll, I'll on say it again. Anthony. I'll say it again. In all references, it will always be specific. It'll state. In this instance, uh, not being specific or being rhetorical or allegorical, sorry. It's sated. It's made specific. Well, it says in the text, if you read it, evening and morning, that's a day. In a Hebrew reckoning, a day is a 24-hour period which has daylight and evening in it. So it's real clear. Yeah, it's based on context, right? And whether it's a rhetorical device or not. So you can't just pull one out and say, oh, this meant a thousand years. No, it doesn't. That's a simile. Right. If it has a number in front of it, it means a specific day. There's a lot of other criteria to it, too. As for the expanse. Yeah, Danny, it's a solid expanse. You forgot the previous word in the definition. I'd like to see your Hebrew scholar. Also, Danny, bring him on here. Maybe he's got some guts. Clown. And remember what Nathan told you. Right. He wasn't lying to you when he told you that in the Bible, if you knowingly lie to kids, there is a severe warning. Danny, it would be better that if a millstone was hung around your neck and you were tossed into the sea. You feel me? Let me get it straight. In, in Western culture, we unwittingly tell our children about the heliocentric model being real. But we wittingly tell them about Santa Claus. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Well, actually, that's me and my wife had a conversation this weekend about Santa. She wants to go through that process. I was like, I am not teaching her, or teaching Lily that there's this man that goes around all over the world in one night, knows everything that you did, bad, good or bad. I, I'm not going to do it. Sorry. I, I well, won't there, is there is a way around that. There is a way around that. Hang on, I won't. Hang on, I think there's a, there's a there's a bigger issue with the intent of why you would lie to the child, and I don't think the intent with Santa is bad. Yeah, uh, it's based on context. You're correct. Uh, I'm I'm thinking that the Lord, I'd have to go back and look at the passages. <laughs> this is meant with serious situations like his existence, right? The Lord's existence, or the nature of hey, reality. Yeah. The nature, nature of, reality. of reality. Knowingly lie. Well. Knowingly lie, that's painfully redundant because lying is intent, yeah, deceitful intent. So, you know what I'd I mean. Like to, Anthony, I'd like to shed some light on that thousand years in a day. It's in Second wait, Peter wait. chapter quick, 3. Quick question. I'm sorry, Tom. Just quick question because I'm curious. So, does, would the Bible or would God in the Bible be against telling kids about Santa Claus? No. The, 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 what we've just, what's just been discussed is that no. We're talking about things that matter. So if you could deem the lie about Santa Claus, if you're going to call it a lie, 
seriously important or devastating to a kid's it's not like god or the nature of reality is it santa so it's contextual okay. i think the conclusion would be no but just as we're still on that topic thanks chocolate the way the way i got around it paul i, I know i'm deviating from something more serious here so i'll keep it brief is is to just treat it like you would the easter bunny or the tooth fairy in other words i i tell her about i tell my kids about not the other one she can't talk but the one i tell about santa but i won't tell her that it's real i we're pretending santa's gonna come do you see what i mean well as long as you're saying you're pretending and we're saying that it's not real that's okay but when oh santa look what santa brought you oh he came down the chimney oh he went through every house throughout the world in a night no sorry yeah Can't i tried it. i tried it on my niece yeah. and it didn't go over so when when they were putting like carrots out for rudolph or whatever i was saying to her we pretend that Rudolph comes to eat them. And my sister got very annoyed. No, <laughs> tell her it's real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think the intent's the important bit, though, isn't it? We're not trying to deceive the kids. Unfortunately, I was very good at pretending to be asleep. So I yeah, exactly. Very... <laughs> I was very watchful over my house on that night, and I never saw anything happen. And then when I would see the next day... And I finally did go to sleep, but I see your uh, presence there, and it says, from Santa. I'm like, hmm, <laughs> I don't know. I went to sleep. It was already daylight. Chocolate, there's um, a Christmas <laughs> There's a Christmas film that came out last year. Oh, I'm um, not going to allow this. Been... No, sorry. Go on, 10th Man. You've been sat there probably pissed off with this last five minutes of conversation. Yeah, I'm sorry, 10th Man. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no. I, actually, I had a good laugh there, but I was just like chocolate myself. Oh, fair enough. I stayed up there. All right. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I, I Anthony. Sorry. Go ahead, no, no, Anthony. I was going to wrap up. Can I finish what I was going to tell Anthony? Yes. That's what I was hoping. Okay. I thought you were giving way for okay. his Christmas movie story. Go ahead, 10th. No, no. No, no. I'm just enjoying the sidebar. Uh, so... That verse about the thousand years in a day in its context is in the uh, book of Second Peter, chapter 3. Verse 3 says, and this won't take long. Above all, be aware of this. Scoffers will come in the last days, scoffing and following their own evil desires, saying, where is his coming that he promised? Ever since our ancestors fell asleep, all things continue as they have been since the beginning of creation. They deliberately overlooked this. By the word of God, the heavens came into being long ago, and the earth was brought about from water and through water. Through these, th through these, the world of the time perished when it was flooded. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are stored up for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Dear friends, don't overlook this one fact. With the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some understand delay, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. How in the world you would take that and go back to Genesis, where the evening and morning were one day, is ridiculous. Clearly speaking of his timelessness. Clearly. And it's not... That Peter verse is, isn't the only one. There's one in the Old Testament also. We get back to Rakia for a few seconds. Uh, the firmament, Rakia, strong number 07549. Number one, extended surface, solid, expanse, firmament, vault of heaven, supporting waters above, considered by the Hebrews as solid. And supporting the waters above, Browns, Driver, Briggs, Ma the noun, masculine, extended surface, solid, expanse, as if beaten out, as base support, supporting the throne of God, the vault of heaven, regarded by Hebrews as solid, and supporting the waters above, Dr. Michael Heiser, right? He's an expert in numerous languages including Hebrew. He says, if one was truly consistent in interpreting the creation description in Genesis 1 at face value, along with other creation descriptions in both testaments, you'd come out with a round flat earth complete with a solid dome over the earth and the earth supported by pillars. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Uh, can you repeat that? 
It's a whole lot. Well, and uh, oh, hold on, Paul. I want that repeated. The whole lot from Eisner. The the whole lot from yes, oh. please. Yes, want please. the whole. Yeah, the whole lot. Not I a piece out of what he said, but if you want the whole, just repeat what he you said. How literal literal creationists are actually only selective literalists, or as I would call them, inconsistent literalists. If one was truly consistent in interpreting the creation description in Genesis 1 at face value, along with other creation descriptions in both testaments, you'd come out with a round, flat earth, complete with a solid dome over the earth, and earth supported by pillars, with shield underneath. He there you go. The way, way that all the ancient guys talk about it. Yeah, to be to be taken literally. There isn't. There's no. There's no, like little caveat, before coming to that conclusion and description as accurately described there. That's how it describes it. There's just no ifs, buts, or maybe's about it. That's. What, I'm not saying it is that because of this. I'm not using it as proof. Now, I'm not decrying anybody who does, but I'm just saying it's to be taken literally. That's how it's described. There's no two ways about it. Chocolate. Let me get my point in now. There was a Christmas movie that came out uh, maybe two years ago, last year or two years ago, maybe three years ago. It's very recent, and it was one of those like almost um, stupid ones that are like, too modern that they're never going to be any good. I, I think I remember this one. The one with uh, Kurt Russell. I think we talked about this before. I think we might have done. I think it was called A Christmas Carol. Yeah, the, with Kurt Russell. Have you seen, if you haven't seen it, Chocolate, given your background in how you saw your childhood Christmas and you knew that they were doing presents or whatever, you need to watch it because that's what they do. They stay up and they wait to see what happens and Santa turns up with the sleigh and it sounds stupid. <laughs> like that, that's it, funny. It's, it's really, that really, really, really good. <laughs> and the amount of flat earth references in it are just unbelievable. It's like, no fucking way you put that in there. No way. That must be intentional. Flat earth references in a Santa movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, sh you should watch it. It's called A Christmas Carol. I think it's called. Or oh, Christmas... All right. I can't remember what it's called, but just put in Google like recent Christmas movies, and I think it's called something like A, C a Christmas yeah. Carol. I think it's called. Yeah, I can, I can find it easy. I know Kurt Russell's in it. Right, yeah, yeah, you've pricked my wife's ears up, so she said Christmas being discussed. Yeah, it's a movie that came out last year or the year before, maybe maybe two years ago, um, and it's about how kids stayed up at night time to see what happened after midnight. In other words, to see whether or not Father Christmas turned up. And this Father Christmas turns up unexpectedly on the, on the roof, but he breaks down or something happens. I can't remember what happens, but the kids end up on the back of the sleigh and it's about their journey around how, how things go wrong. And oh, it's just excellent. And I, I, you know, like when you say like, how you suspend reality for the purpose of the film, as a flat earther, you can suspend the reality. It's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> and right. Are you talking about the one with Tim Allen or Kurt Russell? Because there's an older one called The Santa Claus. I remember that one. Not that one. Right? No. Not that one. The new one. No, it's called, okay. it's called yeah, The it's Christmas very new. Chronicles with Kurt Russell. The Chronicles. That's it. The Chronicles. Or the Chronicles, Chronicles of what? The, the Christmas what? Chronicles. Christmas, Christmas Chronicles. Chronicles. Okay, thank you. I'll check that out. I, I, I have a quick I, question about this sort of on subject. Go on. Or, or more of advice, anyway. I, I just lost um, a space argument to my six-year-old the other day because he said, well, in Storybots, they teach you about the moon, and they're about teaching, and they're supposed to help you. And he's, too, he's in kindergarten. Like, I'm, 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 uh, when, when he figures out that Santa Claus is not real, that's when I think I'm going to have to drop a lot of this other knowledge because I'm, I'm peppering it in every once in a while, but he keeps saying that I don't know anything about space. So what's your question? I mean, how how you're supposed question? to argue with story bots? They're supposed to be oh, teaching I see. us, right? So well, how do you do, argue that with a six-year-old? Do, Wait, do I'm they, confused. Your kid is telling you? I've got a just quick question. Do, do they cl clarify or use the word model? <laughs> no. He, he just says, the... well, we, we look at the moon sometimes, and I, 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 I try to drop hints without like just saying it overtly because we kind of I, I found out about this after he was born. And it's almost like it's too late at this point. He, he's already, the indoctrination is set in so well. And, you know, at some point he could tell you how many moons Jupiter had. 
Okay. And I'm my, thinking, my oh, advice, this is so good. It's so my, my advice would be teach him what a model is. Teach him that a model re can represent something or give you a way of looking at things. Obviously, I'm using adult language. You'll have to dumb this down ne as necessary. But even if it's with a, a physical toy, you know, get a, a full-scale uh, car and then find a toy car model of it and explain the difference between the two. And then you can use your, that to give you juxtaposition between the explanation of how they say the lights in the sky work as a model. So you say, no, it's it's a model. It's a way of seeing things. Like I say, I don't know how to do it down for your kid, but that's the way I would do it. I'd say, explain what a model is, give him a comparison or her, and then from there, you can later on, when the cognition is such that it will make more sense, say, no, that's just a viewpoint, a way of looking at things. There are many models. You can model things in different ways. You can use different materials if you're doing it physically. You can use different concepts if you're doing mentally. But, you know, like I say, the, the introduction at, for a six-year-old, for me, would just be showing them what a model is and explaining how a model works and what a model does. So that later when the heliocentric model yeah. is described as a model, you can say, no, you remember me explaining it's a model. It's just a way of looking at things. That yeah, makes sense. Really yeah, I, I think at this say, point you know, I just need to give it time. Hey, I, you yeah, have a model car, but you can't get in the car, and I can't get in the car and drive you to school because it's a model. But you, there's a real car that we can get into and I could drive you to school. So that would be the difference between something real and just a model. Yeah, yeah, I think he just needs to become more cognitively aware of things as opposed to just, well, he, he saw it on the telly, so therefore, you know, that must... The, the I, I do constantly say, well, just because it's on TV doesn't mean it's real. Pokemon are not real, and, and, and things are just, you know, TV is not necessarily real. So I do keep saying... Uh, teach, teach kids logic. You know, seek out a website logic for six year olds and teach them logic, and then you won't necessarily have to explain everything to them. Any, anything to you, add? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to toddle along to a Spanish lesson talk, talking of teaching. Anything to add, and then I'm gonna round out. You, you, you know, when people go through that age where they say why to everything that you tell them, so why this and why that and the other. Don't dissuade them from saying that. No, that's a lie. Like, it's not why they just say no. <laughs> <laughs> I remember asking why to everything. Why? I mean, we yeah. used to get well pissed off. Go on, uh, Paul. That's how I lost the I... argument. He's like, no, no, you just don't know anything about space. <laughs> I love it. I just wanted to digress real quick before, since you're rounding it out. Um, just to back up what John was saying. This is from Josephus, um, who was a Jewish historian that wrote around the first century. And he's obviously recounting Jewish history from the creation forward. And look what he says right here. So Josephus, first century, close to the, closer to the Bible's origin, he says he also placed a crystalline firmament around it. So any Christian that wants to argue the Bible doesn't talk about um, a real thing, here's Josephus, who's a Jewish historian, actually tells you what it is and their own understanding. That's it. And with that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who did tune in on the Nathan Oakley primary stream for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Also, of course, a massive thank you to all of today's Discord and G Plus panel for making this after show possible. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!